Options versus futures. What is going to be the best vehicle for you to invest your hard-earned capital in in order to gain the very best return over the next few years and as you prepare for retirement? Today, we're going to cover the pros and the cons and what is the best vehicle for your financial freedom all today on Young Money Investments. Now, one thing I want to say before we get started here in this video is that there are multiple benefits to both of these options. A lot of people, obviously, especially financial advisors, tend to push their clients into ETFs. In today's video, I want to give kind of the opposite side to that. What are futures? If you're curious about what futures are, there is a link up here around here to my video, um, and that will kind of talk to you a little bit more about what futures are. But financial advisors do tend to put a lot of their clients in ETFs and ETNs. Today's video, we're gonna talk about more of the reasons why futures would actually potentially be a better option and help you decide which class is best for you. If you've never checked out Young Money Investments Private University or Private Mentorship Group, there is a link down below. I also go over and do live streams on a weekly basis. There is minute by minute call outs on plays that I'm taking, why am I taking them? There's a lot of teaching that goes on in this private a mentorship group. The link, like I said, down below is going to probably be a whole heck of a lot cheaper than the management fees and things like that, that you're going to pay. If you've enjoyed the YouTube channel and you felt like you've learned a decent amount, it's probably most likely, and again, I can't say for 100% certainty, but it's going to be much more in depth and much more knowledgeable when you join that private mentorship. So check it out. And if you have questions, feel free to message me either on here in the comment section down below or on Instagram. And if you have not done so already, please feel free to follow me over on Instagram at Young Money Investments. So taking a look here at the chart, you can see obviously some of the differences in how futures compare to being in an ETF. So futures offer obviously many advantages over popular ways of trading and by popular, I mean, most people just don't take the time to understand what futures are. I had traded personally for over 10 years and had never even really looked into what futures were, you know, what points were. And it's kind of ironic that so many other investors, most likely, well, I, I'd say, I say most likely, but for sure, don't look into what futures are or even understand points and ticks and what the dollar values are related to that. So like I said, if you haven't checked out that video on futures already, check that one out. And um, the link is there and also down in the description. And one more thing that is not statistically tracked whatsoever is those that subscribe to Young Money Investments tend to do better in their financial journeys. Can't really prove that, but I'm pretty sure it helps out. I would love to be friends with you. You'd probably love to be friends with me. Let's make this relationship a little more secure. Tap that subscribe button and uh, let's keep rolling through the video. So first off, obviously the difference between ETFs and futures is the annual management fees. As you can see right here, futures have no management fees, whereas ETFs do have a management fee. So uh, basically when you uh, purchase an ETF, it is a pool of stocks, sometimes bonds, sometimes treasury notes, et cetera, et cetera. They can be packaged into this one ticker that you can buy and basically hold. This gives you a little bit more diversity, obviously, but the problem with that is there is an asset management fee. And so, you know, let's say the ETF returns maybe 10% maybe that uh, broker that has created that ETF, they, they will take 2%. So you actually only make 8% year after year because they take an asset management fee of 2%. Whereas with futures, when you actually are buying into the futures contract, uh, you have no asset management fee, which is really nice. Now, when it comes to potential cost efficiencies, uh, you definitely can have significantly lower fees with futures. But as the asterisk says right there, and if you take a look down below, it depends on your time horizon, direction, and holding costs. Those are things you do need to take into account. With ETFs, there are definitely definitely cost efficiencies. You know, if you're trading, for example, an ETN like you guys or the guys, it is a 3x leveraged ETN that auto balances every single day. And so if you do look at the chart, it's always decaying. So with this chart, it is always decaying. You do not want to be in one of these. And this is obviously a really like huge example on you guys how this chart is just really decaying over time because that is a 3X leverage ETF and all those fees for the auto balancing and things like that, and it's based on natural gas futures, um, it just creates it to where this is only a good asset to buy if you're focused on the very, very short term and not a long term investment. One of the great things with futures is that you have nearly 24 hour access to buy or sell, whereas obviously with ETFs, you are just stuck obviously during the normal trading days. You have your after hours and pre market trading, depending on which broker you're using. Futures literally trade 23 out of the 24 hours per day. 
and then close on Fridays and reopen Sunday night. In terms of liquidity, obviously there is a lot, lot, lot more liquidity in the futures market. There's nearly one, over one trillion for sure, dollars traded per day in the futures market. And we're talking about billions and billions. Billions and billions and billions of dollars, as good old Donald Trump says, in liquidity in the futures market. Not to say that the ETF market does not have a lot of liquidity, but core futures can trade many times more notionally uh, per day. There's just a lot more money in futures than there actually is in each individual ETF. Uh, based on pure price exposure to underlying assets, obviously with futures there is, it's designed to tightly track the overall underlying asset, which is, for example, in the mini E's, also uh, backslash, and it's back, it's just ES. So basically ES is the ticker symbol. That is very tightly and very closely tracked to the overall asset of the S&P 500. In ETFs, it's not. Uh, there's not really pure price exposure like there is in futures. Um, as it says right here, you know, funding levels, fees, or other factors can affect the price. And just like I showed you on the you guys chart there, that is really what affects the price of the chart. It's that decaying ETF because of all of the amounts of fees that are coming out of those. And so you can't invest in those usually long-term. And even if you do invest in some of those uh, like SPY uh, ETFs, you're still getting asset management fees and that does suck. Now, when we talk about going to delivery, what does it mean to go to delivery? Basically in the futures market, you are buying a contract to purchase a certain asset or, you know, or it's basically just an asset. We'll just leave it at that. Um, as it says right here on the chart, it can go to delivery, but only a small percentage of people actually take delivery. You can go to delivery on things like corn, wheat, barley, gold. You can actually take delivery of these physical products, but most people, nine times out of 10, do not take delivery of the actual physical product. That's just an option that you have when you're trading a futures contract. With ETFs, you don't have that option, and I don't think that's a pro or a con for either of these. In terms of portfolio diversification, you have have a ton of portfolio diversification when it comes to both futures and ETFs. In terms of tax efficiencies, I think it's very important to take a look down here at the very bottom of the double asterisk where it says depends on holding periods and time horizon. The information provided should not be considered tax advice and consult your tax advisor before making any investment. But with that being said, uh, there is a blended 60 long-term and 40% short-term US capital gains treatment for futures markets. And with ETFs, you do not have tax efficiencies whatsoever. Uh, you, could you could trigger a relatively expensive short-term capital gains tax in an instant. So that's one of the actual big benefits to going with futures as opposed to ETFs as well. In terms of trading futures, you do not actually own the asset because it is a contract while you are owning that until you actually take possession or take delivery of that particular asset. You do not actually own it. You only own a contract. With an ETF, you literally own a piece of that ETF. You are a shareholder of that ETF until you end up selling that piece again. So overall, those are some of the major differences and comparisons that we can talk about when we're talking about ETFs and we are talking about futures contracts. Hope you found this helpful, insightful, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and also comment down below. What are some of your other thoughts about the futures market versus ETFs? What have you seen? What are some things that you've learned? I'd love for you to share your information and your wealth and knowledge below. Or if you just have questions, please share your questions down below and I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly do appreciate it. And if you've not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. It drastically helps out the channel. And I love to talk more with you and help answer your questions and help you along this whole little financial journey or just be friends. Yeah, that's always fun too. Catch you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.